so you know absolutely nothing about GitLab CI, but need to quickly learn how to build a pipeline in about 10 minutes? In this tutorial, I will cover the absolute basics of writing pipeline scripts, creating stages and jobs, using Docker images, and a few other important aspects you may not even know exist. We will create a simple pipeline with two stages, one that will create a file and another one that will test if the file has been created. It sounds pretty basic, but understanding this configuration means you already know quite a bit about building pipelines in GitLab CI. Once the basics are clear, at the end I will also reveal the steps you need to take to build a real project. You don't need to download or install any software, all you need is a browser, I promise. In this tutorial, I won't cover how to install and configure the GitLab runner, as that's a more complex topic that can cause many issues if you're inexperienced. So if you haven't done so already, go to gitlab.com and sign up for a free account. I highly recommend using gitlab.com even if you have access to a different GitLab installation. This ensures you can follow along with this tutorial. With a free account, you have 400 pipeline minutes, which is enough for learning GitLab and building small projects. In case you're wondering, CI in GitLab CI stands for Continuous Integration. This practice helps developers integrate their work, catch bugs early, and ensure the software is always working properly. Tools like GitLab allow you to create a pipeline that ensures every change that goes into a code repository is checked. So let's begin by building a pipeline. We're gonna start in the top right corner by creating a project. I'm gonna click on create blank project. And I'll name this project my first pipeline. And in the project configuration, you wanna initialize this project with a readme file so that there's at least one file inside the project. The project has been successfully created. And what we see here inside is a typical Git repository, which contains whatever project files we have for an application. Currently, it only has this readme file. And inside this repository, we're gonna store the pipeline configuration as a file. And for that reason, we're gonna select here, edit, and open the web IDE. In the web IDE, you can go to settings, themes, and change the theme but we're gonna go here to settings and I'm gonna search for white space. And I wanna make sure here that for the editor, we're gonna render the white space in all situations. And this is gonna make sense in a second because we're gonna create here a new file and we have to name this file .gitlab-ci.yaml. I'm gonna hit here, enter. And zoom in on this name as much as possible because it's super important. If you do not write this name exactly as you see it on the screen, GitLab will not detect it as a pipeline configuration file. And for that reason, your pipeline is not going to be executed. Inside this configuration file, we're going to define our pipeline stages and jobs. And in this pipeline, we want to create a file and we want to go through two stages. First, we build this file and then we test to see if the file has been created. So let's begin with the build job and we're gonna name the job simply create file. After this, I'm gonna write here column. And I'm gonna press enter and then tab. And what you will see here are actually two points. And this indicates that there are two spaces or a tab. The format that we're using here is a markup language called YAML. It's somewhat similar to JSON, just in case you know JSON, but it looks a bit different. In an essence, it allows us to provide key value pairs of information. And for this particular format, the indentation is super important. This is why I want you to pay attention to the way I'm writing things here. So for example, we wanna run some commands and we're gonna run these commands inside the script block. The script property can be described as a list and where we can have multiple commands. We can use echo as a command to print out a message like building so that we know that we have started the build process. But let's say, for example, we wanna create a file inside the build directory. So we're gonna create a directory with mkdir and I call the directory build. 
And then we're going to use the touch command to create an empty file inside that directory. So it's going to be build forward slash some file.txt. Just in case you get stuck writing this pipeline configuration file, you can also put the entire configuration in the video description. So check that out. So these are the commands that we want to execute. And by default, GitLab uses Docker as a built environment. And this is a super important concept because it allows us to specify which Docker image we want to use. So what we will do next is use here the property image. We're going to use a Docker image, which is called Alpine Linux. It's called the name of the image is Alpine. Alpine Linux is a very small distribution ideal for CI CD. So I think we have everything that we need. I'm going to commit these changes directly to the main branch. The changes have been committed. All we have to do now is go back to the project. I recommend refreshing the page. And what you should notice here at the top is the commit message. And this is also an indication that a pipeline has been started. We can click on this and see exactly what's going on. So we're going to see here, this is the pipeline. Pipeline contains here the job, which is called create file. And if you want to see what exactly this job is doing, we'll have to click here on this. It's possible that some of you will have issues with this. So I've included in the video description all the possible reasons why you're not seeing exactly what I'm seeing right now on the screen. So if you got stuck, pause the video for a second, go to the video description, you will find more help there. So let's try to understand what has happened here. These are the logs for the job that we have created and we have executed this job. So there are a few important things, for example, the duration, and we have executed this for 10 seconds. There's a specific runner that has picked up this job and has executed. At a first glance, whatever we're seeing here can be super confusing. So let me walk you through some of the most important things you need to know. And what I want you to notice is this particular part here on line five. And it says here using Docker executor with image Alpine. This is the image that we have specified. So the runner that we have here, which is some server somewhere, is going to pick up our job configuration. And it's going to take this Alpine image and it's going to create a Docker container out of it. And then inside this Docker container, it's going to take our Git repository and it's going to pretty much clone everything that is inside the Git repository in the container. So we have access to all the files that are in the Git repository. And then going a bit further down, this is the part where our commands are being executed. So whatever we have put here in the script block, it's going to be executed here. So we have the first command, echo building, and we can see here below the text that we have printed. So we know, we know that this is building now. And then we have created the directory build. And then we have used the touch command to create this particular file. So what's important to notice is that because none of the commands have failed the entire pipeline, this job is considered successful and the pipeline is considered successful as well. Just in case you don't know exactly where to find this, you, all you have to do is go back to the project. This is the project. And here on the left hand side, you're going to find here a menu item, which is called build. You have two options, pipelines and jobs. I'm going to click here, first of all, on pipelines. So here you will find all the pipelines that are executed for this particular project. I'm going to see here this pipeline and the execution of the pipeline has been triggered because we made a commit in the repository. So every time we made a commit, a new pipeline is going to be started. So we can take a look here at the pipeline. And we're going to see here that we have this create file job here. If we click again on the job, we're going to see the execution logs for this job. Now, there's something important I want to show you. And if you're taking a look at the repository, you're going to see that we have our GitLab CI YAML file. We still have the readme file. And you're probably wondering, where is the build directory in the file that we have created? I'm going to answer this in just one second. But let's first continue working on our pipeline. And we're going to continue here by verifying that this file has been created. Because typically, we want to build something. And then we want to test if what we built 
is successful or not. So let's go ahead and create a new job and we're gonna call the job test file. And before I go any deeper into this, just as a spoiler, this pipeline is not gonna work as intended. So don't waste time debugging it. Try to stick around for the explanations, but also try to follow what I'm doing to see if you're getting the exact same result. Because failing is super important because this is how you learn. So what do you wanna do? We wanna test if this file has been created. So how can we do this? We're gonna define here a script block. And inside the script, or we can use a Linux utility command, which is called test. And test has a flag with dash F, which allows to test the existence of a specific file. So all we have to do is provide here the path of this file. And additionally, we're gonna also provide the Alpine image. That's sufficient for what we need. I'm gonna go ahead, commit these changes, and we're gonna take a look at the pipeline in a second. So here's the view with all the pipelines. I'm here inside build pipelines. I'm gonna see here that the latest pipeline has an issue. All we have to do is click on this status here to see the entire pipeline. And what we're gonna see here is something interesting, which we may have missed the first time. So as you can see here, this is our first job. This is our second job. So the first job is still successful, is creating the file. But then the second job is failing. And what is also important to notice is this test here. Now, why is this second job failing? Well, we're gonna take a look here and we're gonna see here that this command here is the latest command that we have executed and it says here job failed exit code one. An exit code is a way for Linux command to indicate if something was successful or not. An exit code zero is typically not printed. It means that everything has been successful, but an exit code one indicates an error. We don't know what the error is, but because the last command that we have executed is this one, we can pretty much assume that this job did not find this file. Now there's something that's probably even more important to understand, and that is the execution order. This two jobs, have been executed in parallel. They have been started in parallel. And if you think about it, it doesn't really make sense to test something which has not even been created. So what we need to do is to actually split this into a sequence. And this test here is actually a stage. You're gonna see here that these are executed in the same stage in parallel. And if we do not specify a stage, GitLab will automatically assign a job to the test stage. So how can we specify a stage so that we first create a file and then we test the file? Let's go back to the configuration. And all we need to do is rather simple. We just need to define which stages we have. I'm gonna go here right at the top of the file and I'm gonna write stages, column. And as a list, I'm gonna provide the stage build as a name and also the stage test. Feel free to name this as you wish. So what you will need to do next is to amend our configuration and specify stage, build. And this means that we're gonna assign this create file job, gonna assign it here to the build stage so that Jenkins knows, hey, we wanna execute build and test, and it's gonna look for all the stages that are with build, and after that, it's gonna look for all the stages that are with test. So here we can also specify stage. We're gonna commit these changes and we're gonna take a look again at the pipeline. It's still gonna fail as a spoiler. So what you will see here is that our third pipeline execution still has a stage that is failing. You're gonna see here one is successful, one is not. And the question is why does this fail? Because now if we're taking a look at the pipeline, we're gonna see that we have a pretty logical execution. We are starting with the build stage and the build stage has here a job create file. This is being executed and only after this has been completed, the next stage is starting, the test stage. And this stage also has a job which is being executed, but it's still failing. You need to understand a very important concept about these jobs and how they are executed. Every time we are starting a job, the runner that we have here 
is gonna start from scratch. It's gonna use a new Docker image to create a new container. And it's just gonna include the files that are available in the repository. If in a particular job or stage, we have created some files, those files are lost. So in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is that the files that have been created here inside the build stage by the create file job, once the execution of the job has ended, that container is destroyed. And because the files have been created inside the container, they no longer exist. So they cannot be present here when you're trying to test to see if those files exist. But don't worry, there is a way to get around this, and this is called artifacts. So artifacts is a configuration that allows us to tell GitLab, hey, you know, we have created here something super important, and we want you to keep this. So I'm going to use here the keyword artifacts, and inside artifacts are going to be a property which is called paths. And here we can specify multiple paths as artifacts. This is why this is a list. And I'm going to specify here the build directory as an artifact. I'm going to commit the changes again. And I'm going to take a look together at the pipeline. And now finally, the pipeline is successful. And let's take a look here to see exactly what has happened. We have here the create file job, the test file job. Now the test file is successful. But how is this now working? Well, if you're taking a close look at this, there are a few important things to notice. You're going to see here, it says downloading artifact. So the previous job, by specifying here the artifacts, specifying the build folder as an artifact, has led to GitLab to store these files somewhere else outside. So the container here is still being destroyed. The files are still not part of the repository. They are just stored somewhere by GitLab. And you're gonna see here uploading artifacts for successful job and the fact that they are uploaded somewhere. And we can even see here this part with job artifacts. We can browse here. And we see here our build directory and the file which is empty, which we have created. And this is why this configuration is now working only because of this artifact. And then when this particular job is starting, GitLab will know to download these artifacts to make them available to the job. And then, yes, this test command is going to work. Everything I've shown you in this tutorial can feel a bit useless since it's not clear how to build a real project. I hear you. In a nutshell, you need to handle two important steps. First of all, you need to find an appropriate Docker image that contains the runtime environment you need. For example, if you want to build a project that requires PHP, then you need a Docker image that contains PHP, like PHP 8 FPM. And the second step involves running all the commands needed to build the project. This typically involves first installing the project dependencies and then compiling the code or somehow building it. Setting all this up certainly takes more than 10 minutes, but if you wish to follow along and take a simple web application, build it, test it and deploy it in the AWS cloud, check the video description for a full course that will walk you through these steps with GitLab CI. If you're new to DevOps and have no idea what CI CD is, this course is for you. I will also cover basic Linux commands that anyone in IT should know. Anyway, thank you for watching this short tutorial. Give it a thumbs up if you learned something new and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more tutorials from me. Take care.